Hello, my name is Father Jerry Chilko. I'm a Redemptorist speaking to you from St. Peter the Apostle Church and the National Shrine of St. John Newman in Philadelphia. Welcome to the Gospel Reflection for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Every parent knows just how difficult at times it can be to get your child to do something or not do something. Clean your room. Stop teasing your brother. Go to bed. Put down the phone when you're reading. Do your homework. So forth. There can be many reasons why a child resists doing something, but one reason stands out. Children often resist their parents because they don't see the value in what they're being asked to do or not do. They don't see why these things are important. To children, many of these things appear to be arbitrary, just the things that parents do. And while parents may get frustrated at times with their children over these things, most parents know that children really aren't thinking or understanding in the same way that adults do. It's just kids being kids. However, we also know that we adults also act in exactly the same way and push back when others ask things of us. Like when a spouse or a boss puts demands on us, or when people give us advice, especially if it's unsolicited advice, or when the church tells us the requirements for the sacraments, especially baptism and marriage. We adults don't like others telling us what to do but for a much different reason. I believe that we adults often push back against these things because all too often we're convinced that we know better, that our way is better, and that any advice or guidance or instruction that comes from another source is never gonna be as good 
as the advice we give to ourselves. In other words, we want to call the shots. No one is going to tell me what to do. On the fourth Sunday of Easter, we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. And once again, we hear Jesus is a shepherd unlike any other. A shepherd who will never abandon those who are his own, but who will give his life for his sheep. His care for those who are his own is unlimited, unconditional, unquestionable. And of course, this can make us real, feel really good inside. It can make us feel loved and safe and valued. This image of God is in stark contrast to how many people viewed God for much of human history and how some people still view God. In the past, God, or the gods with a small g, they were to be feared, viewed with suspicion. They were untrustworthy, unpredictable. But the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is something completely different. This is a God who can be trusted, a God who will protect us, a God who's on our side, not just when we do the right thing, but even when we sin. The love our God has for us is non-negotiable, and that is good news. But while it's true that God will be good to us, help us, protect us, and love us, it's also true that we can't simply turn to the Good Shepherd only when it suits our purposes, only when we think we need Him. Rather, accepting the Lord as our Good Shepherd means listening and following Him, not just when it's convenient, but always, every moment of every day, in every situation and circumstance. Relying on the Good Shepherd is not a once-in-a-while thing. It's a way of life. In other words, we need to accept in faith that God knows better and that God's way is better. That following his lead is the only way that makes sense. Which means we need to resist the temptation to be in charge, to call the shots, to have our own way all of the time. And that takes humility and trust and faith. May the image of the Good Shepherd not simply fill us with warm, fuzzy feelings, but inspire us to listen for God's voice in all things. And when we hear the voice of the Shepherd, when we feel that tug urging us in a particular direction, down a particular fat path, may we have the courage to simply follow wherever he takes us, knowing that God is on our side every step of the way. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I thank you for joining the Redemptorist online preaching this week, and we hope that we, you will join us next Wednesday, April 28th.